I read in your book that you were saying the worst stunt you ever performed was the jet fuel. That was the most painful. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It um it was it was a frustrating question for uh you know for me when people would ask what was the most painful stunt, particularly because it was such a frequently asked question. Yeah. And uh, you know, it frustrated me because there are really different criteria to the pain. There's the duration yeah. and then there's the intensity. And, and the type. Right. And um, I uh, would lean towards um, the, you know, quicker it's over the better. But, you know, it's just, it's just apples and oranges. Sure. And then when I had suffered the third degree burns on 15% of my body and needed skin graft surgery, that actually checked both boxes. The burning, the length. Yeah. yeah, the duration and the intensity of the pain was uh, like just in another world. I, I went on effectively a tour of burn units after that. Wow. And, uh, and, and heard multiple times that people who have been both shot and stabbed as well as suffered burns will tell you burns are the worst pain of everything. I could see that. Yeah. That's really bad. Did you feel the pain right away when the burn happened or was this? I, I did. I did. It, uh, it wasn't as bad the next day. And then each day thereafter, it just got like more and more unbearable. Mm -hmm. And then at day five, I was like, okay, like I gotta. So it's progressive. Showed up in the hospital on day five and they're like, what the fuck were you waiting for? Oh, you, you know? didn't go right away? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I thought that it would just get better, you know. Okay. And uh, and and I showed up on day five, and they they uh, explained that I needed emergency surgery. Wow. And the real pisser was that uh, their next question was, "When's the last time you ate?" And I was like, "I just ate you know, before I came." <laughs> so they're here. like, "You have to wait eight hours." Eight hours, and I had just um, refused um, the you know painkiller. You know, be like, no, I'm a sober guy. I don't want any painkiller. Mm -hmm. And then I heard, we cannot operate on you for eight hours because you just ate. And I said, okay, give me the painkiller. <laughs> Do you know what they gave you? I believe it was Dilaudid. Dilaudid, yeah. And um, my arms were so burnt, they put the IV in my neck. Wow. Yeah. So you had like a central line put in. Yeah. And um, it uh, it's, it's crazy being a, a sober guy in recovery. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, how quickly that awakens the beast you know like oh like are you in pain yes <laughs> the <laughs> receptors yeah. right away started yeah it's really crazy and and and, and it was uh, uh it, it had a real like sort of powerful effect on me like i i you know yes i am still in pain i need mm -hmm. more and then what snapped me out of it at one point when i was asking for yet more they said we will give you more but it's getting to a point where I'd be concerned about your, you know, getting off. Yeah. And that woke me up and I was like, oh yeah, like I. Got it. I can't what would it. your advice be either to yourself at that moment when they initially offered it or maybe to someone else who's facing the same dilemma? Um, I mean, they're, they're, I could be in that uh, situation a thousand times and 100% and of the time I would take, take that painkiller because yeah. the pain was that bad. Wow. Um, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of careful about giving out advice to other people, particularly as it relates to addiction. Sure. But um, I know that for me, in, in my 14 years of sobriety, I've never even filled out a prescription for uh, for any kind of a, a painkiller, it's been all Advil and Tylenol. Okay, congratulations been, on that. That's a long yeah, time. Yeah, I've I've been in um, in horrific pain and uh, taken Advil and Tylenol together, <laughs> okay. but that's as far as I've gone. Got it. Okay, and in in severe cases, we do recommend that uh, in the hospital. So. It, it's unbelievable how effective both of those uh, are, uh, Tylenol and Advil. Well, because they work slightly in different ways. So you kind of get a stacking right. effect of the medicine. And again, I don't recommend that to most patients because it's largely unnecessary for most pain. Right. But in certain instances, a big example of it is actually dental pain. And I've heard you've had right. oh a lot God. of dental Unbelievable issues. Unbelievable amounts. Yeah. Yeah. I, and your biggest risk that you say people face is by doing one thing that 
not everyone likes to do. What is Floss, that thing? Yeah. Floss, yeah. It's, it's not a risk that uh, that everybody faces. It's just personally my biggest regret mm. in life. Like, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, my biggest regret is that I was not diligent about flossing. Right. And um, I, uh, I think I was genetically predisposed to having poor oral health, mm. you know, in the teeth and gums department. But... Um, Part of that, and, and really the, the worst part of that, is that um, I was one of those people who, I am one of those people who cannot get away with not flossing mm. because not flossing led to uh, the presence of a bacteria mm -hmm. with a very, it's a very distinctive odor when mm -hmm. someone has this bacteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the crazy thing about it is that the person who has that bacteria in their doesn't mouth smell doesn't it. know it. Yeah. Doesn't know it. And I remember like, um, you know, being uh, like in my very early 20s, maybe late teens, my mom would say, oh, your, your breath. I'm like, mom, I just brushed my teeth. And she's like, I don't care. Your breath is. And I didn't get it. You mm -hmm. know, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. And um, it, was, it was just years and years later that uh, that a dentist said, hey, you know, um, you've got this odor in your mouth, like, uh, you, you know, and, and uh, I became a diligent flosser. One time I got in a van with all the jackass guys and, and we man <laughs> and we man says, oh, dude, Steve-O, your breath. And Knoxville just says, saying Steve-O has bad breath is like saying we man is short. <laughs> it's just all the time. And I and, uh, got, got so many years of my life that uh, it was disgusting for people to have a conversation with me because of this odor coming out of my mouth. And did flossing solve that? It did. I had a, I had a, a round of deep cleaning. Okay. And um, and and flossed ever since. Now I have a whole ritual at night. Um, water pick is how I start. Yep. Then I floss. Then I brush. Then I tongue scrape. Okay. Then I rinse with the fluoride rinse. Okay, I love it. So you have like the full cycle going on. Yeah, because I have just such horrific gum recession mm. that really it's just an exercise in doing everything I can to preserve what little remains. Yeah. And and if it weren't for my poor oral hygiene with the flaws, because it's not just the, you know, the, the bacteria, the odor sure. that was emanating from my mouth. It like, I, I blame the, the hardcore gum recession on that too. Yeah, of course. And I'm curious, did you, when you started doing the hardcore dental care, did you at the same time get the Barrett's esophagus process started? I had the, um, I, I had it already. But you had it already. Yeah, the yeah. reason I ask is because a lot of times acid reflux will present with bad breath. Wow. So I wonder if like as a child, dipping. yeah, <laughs> were you like a kid uh, having early symptoms and that's how you developed Barrett's esophagus from long standing reflux? I wonder, uh, it, it sounds like it could have been, uh, it could be a chicken or the egg thing here yeah. because the, the um, acid reflux presenting as bad breath. So like what came first, the, yeah, the exactly. parents or the bad breath? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. And you know what, what's, what's so uh, perplexing is how it's um, like in our culture, like, like you'll tell somebody if, uh, if they've got like a booger in their nose, yeah. you know, like if someone's got like some, oh, you've got some food on your face. Yeah. But like nobody and myself included can uh, bear to say to somebody, <laughs> dude, you're, dude, you know. Well, because I think it's not as easily to be fixed. Like you can wipe this off, but right. if someone's breath's <laughs> Right, they and and really and, and I want to like when I smell that very distinctive bacteria smell coming out of someone's mouth, I I, I have this inner dialogue. I want to tell the person like, hey, like, you know, I'm I I don't want to be unkind, but I you know I I want you to know that that uh, I I can smell this thing that that I used to have a problem with, and the answer is to to go to the dentist and get a cleaning and then floss, and and a real tell is that if you floss and smell the floss, you can tell them. Well, yeah, that that's that's that actually that's, happens to people that are healthy as well if they haven't flossed in a little while. Right. Yeah. And and, and uh, now as I move forward in my life, I I, I really predict that I'm going to have a whole new biggest regret and that is going to be um, 
not having a very uh, disciplined stretching regimen. Interesting.